uh, Ariel Seidman. I'm the CEO and co-founder of HiveMapper. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're working on and how we're also using a lot of the Mapbox components um, in HiveMapper. But before we get started, I just want to give you guys a little bit of context in terms of why even HiveMapper exists and what is creating the opportunity for us to create these new kinds of mapping tools that you're going to see in a brief moment. What's happening today in the mapping industry, I think, is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So historically, um, satellite really was the king of all mapping data, whether it be using Maps and Mapbox or other products. Central to that was the satellite imagery. So currently, there's a couple hundred satellites orbiting the Earth, generating roughly 300 terabytes worth of data. Um, if you then compare that to video, video cameras on airplanes, on drones, on cars, LIDAR sensors, uh, both in drones, airplanes, and now coming in cars, collectively, all of that data that we refer to as VLR, or video LIDAR radar data, generates roughly 200,000 terabytes worth of data every single day. So again, 200,000 terabytes of video LIDAR radar data compared to roughly 300 terabytes coming across from satellites. So the story here really is that satellite is no longer the king of mapping data. So over the last 25 years, we've created amazing products and amazing companies all focused on the satellite data. And so this world is fundamentally different than the world that you're seeing over here, the video LIDAR radar data world. And so how is it different? One is this world is incredibly centralized, right? You have these amazing companies spending tons and tons of money putting up satellites into space. And then there are also all the data is very, very, uh, sorry, all the sensors are very, very centralized, right? You have a couple hundred sensors. If you compare that to this world, you have hundreds of millions of sensors, right? They're very decentralized. You don't have control over where a drone is flying, where an airplane is flying, where a car is driving. And so it's creating a new opportunity and new problems and new challenges for us to be able to deal with all this data. So what is HiveMapper? HiveMapper is a machine vision powered mapping stack that automatically detects changes in the physical world. I'm going to show you that. So how does it work? Before we get into actually a product demonstration, what you're going to see over here is we collect video. So it could be your own video. It could be video sometimes that we collect as well. But primarily, it's video that customers are generating, whether it be from a million dollar sensor flying at 15,000, 20,000 feet above ground level to a drone flying a $200 or $300 camera flying at a couple hundred feet above ground level. And soon, next year, we're going to be introducing dash cam as well. So you could be driving around feeding video into HiveMapper. All of that video gets automatically ingested into HiveMapper. And there's a bunch of different ways that we do that. Uh, and then we go ahead and automatically build these three-dimensional maps and provide you the entire end user experience to be able to analyze and view and visualize these maps. So what you're about to see here, hopefully this video works. Um, so this is a three-dimensional map collected from video off of drones and airplanes after the Santa Rosa fires. Every single pixel and every single point in this map is geo-registered roughly 30 centimeters accuracy with only video. The user then went into change detection mode. Anything that is blue is automatic, has been identified as added. Anything in red has been identified as removed. That happens automatically. So everything from ingesting the video to producing the map to visualizing the map to seeing the change detection happens automatically with no user in engagement at all. Um, this is across the El Paso border here. Uh, this is actually doing change detection against LIDAR that was previously collected. And you can identify that there was something in green over here. The user can then click in to inspect it further. What you're about to see here is actually uh, city of San Francisco, 50 square miles that was lit up um, by HiveMapper and generated a map that is 30 centimeters absolute accuracy. And the beautiful thing about this, if I can replay, hold on a second. OK. This was different drones, different airplanes, flying different times a day, different collection platforms, different kinds of video cameras. The only common thing that was added was the video. And you see that there's some holes here in the map. And that's fine. You can go and fly those areas, ultimately be able to drive those areas. You put the video in, and it automatically grows. And so this is really a map that is scalable across the entire globe. What we're not building here is these isolated map once, use once, and then throw away. 
is if you're the Air Force, you can come and map an area. The Marines can come with their collection platforms, map the same area, and then you can do change detection. You can add and grow the single combined map of that area, even if all the different agencies and all the different operators are using different types of collection platforms with different cameras. This was really core ethos that we built and that we focused on in the early days of HiveMapper such that we could scale globally. Um, this is also Santa Rosa, California after, and what you're actually gonna be looking at here is change detection against LIDAR. This was a mobile home park that was destroyed. And every single one of those green dots over there, those green uh, areas was actually a mobile home that was unfortunately destroyed. This is the previous LIDAR data that you're seeing there versus what you have there today. Um, this is really important, right? Like a lot of times we rely, just kind of default, we satisfy into these existing products, whether it be Google Maps or Google Earth or other tools like that. And what you're seeing over here is if you wanted to be able to navigate, you know, across this, you know, from here to there, well, guess what? If you go to Google Maps or something like that, they're gonna tell you to actually go around this entire road. Well, guess what? You can just walk through that backyard now, right? You don't have to go around the entire way. So the beauty of fresh maps, when you need them, when you absolutely, they're mission critical for your, for the current mission, this is the type of data that you're gonna need and you're gonna require. LiDAR, so we, I've mentioned LiDAR a couple different times. With HiveMapper comes tons and tons and tons of LiDAR data that ships automatically with the product. And what LiDAR really gets you is a couple of things in the context of HiveMapper. One is it gets you even more accurate maps. So if there's LiDAR in an area, and then you go and you put some video into HiveMapper, the resulting map that you get generate is going to be roughly 20 to 30 centimeters absolute accuracy, which is huge, just with video only. The other thing is you can do change detection. So change detection against LiDAR. So you have a video that was collected today, you have LiDAR that was collected a month ago, two months ago, two years ago, it doesn't matter. You take the both of them, create maps, and then voila, you have the change detection visualization that I showed you. Search, so we, we think about search in a slightly different way. So this is a map of San Francisco. The user puts down that yellow dot and says, hey, go find me all the video that has ever seen that exact spot. And so we see this a lot, right, in the gov world. It's like, hey, we were at this location. We have some video from two months ago or three months, of, uh, three months ago. Can anyone go find that video of this compound? Guess what, you have all of a sudden 10 analysts searching for a week trying to go find that video. This obviously is seconds, right? And what we're gonna be doing soon is actually reversing this. So you can select an object in a video and then say, ha, where is HiveMapper, where is this object in the real world? And we can tell you, okay, this object is on the third story of a parking garage. Um, measure, you can measure everything and you can measure any, everything based off of incredibly fresh data and you can measure everything in three dimensions. Uh, you can actually go do this on our website today, so I won't bore you with this right now. Um, HiveMapper works well with Gov collection platforms and sensors. So two years ago, when we started getting introduced to a lot of Gov and defense customers, they said to us, Ariel, this is wonderful, right? It's great that you can do this with commercial products and commercial drones and commercial sensors, but guess what? We fly predators and we fly reapers and we fly these very, very exquisite, sophisticated technologies, and oh, by the way, we fly them in fundamentally different ways than everyone in the commercial world flies their stuff. Totally reasonable question, and frankly, they should have been skeptical. And so what you're seeing over here is actually a three-dimensional map built off of, from a FLIR star sapphire flying at roughly 15,000 feet uh, above ground level north of San Francisco. Uh, you can actually go and see this map in HiveMapper, right? I'm always very intentional about just showing the actual screenshot that's taken from our product, so this is entirely real. Uh, this is generated from the same kind of sensor that you see flying around in Reapers and all the other types of drones. Um, here's the IR version of that. So you had a camera that was slaved, EO and IR, so this means you can actually do change detection, fly at night, generate an IR generated map, fly in the morning, see the changes between the two. Here you're actually seeing change detection from that same area. So you can actually see those oil containers moving up and down. And that's what you're seeing in these kind of big change detections over here. Uh, you, we actually automatically add terrain and soon streets and POI. So you have uh, automated full visual, of, uh, full, full, full understanding of kind of where you're operating in. So more on this in the coming months actually. 
Um, mapping technology is really, really hard, right? We're not building a standard uh, HR application or business SaaS application. Um, and you've got to be very, very focused about what, how you spend your engineering resources. And so we have great partners in Mapbox who've already built a lot of incredible mapping technology, so we don't have to go in and reinvent the wheel. And so let me show you a couple places where we use, where we use Mapbox. So the first is every single map tile that you see in the context of Hive Mapper is generated from customized maps that we use the Mapbox Studio to create and then automatically render with Mapbox. And so that just saves us a ton of time in terms of, hey, we want to really want this thing to look like Hive Mapper, but we don't want to create this from scratch. And so what you're seeing over here is on our two-dimensional map, we'll automatically highlight for you any area that has already been mapped. And there's a lot more detail you can actually go into. The other is geocoding search, right? Like being able to navigate around the map, find different locations very, very seamlessly is incredibly important. And then the last piece is LiDAR coverage, right? There are certain areas where we have incredible LiDAR coverage. You can see that and you can see all the different coverage maps and so forth. Um, there's a ton more that's coming in the next couple of months around additional kind of custom map layers that cust customers will be able to add. And again, leveraging some of the powerful capabilities that Mapbox provides is helping us get there faster. We have two products, and so I think I heard this mentioned earlier. We have one product, which is Hive Mapper Colony, which is an on-premise product. Obviously, most of our Gov and Defense customers use that product, and bundled inside of that is Mapbox Atlas. And so it's beautiful, right? Customer goes, installs, and then spends literally five additional minutes to go install the Mapbox Atlas component. Um, and so we're going to make that even easier for customers in future releases, so they don't even have to worry about that. Then on the Hive Mapper Swarm side, which is our cloud-based product, we have the benefit of being able to hook into all of the Mapbox cloud-based products. So that dual use, the on-premise, and also not having to reinvent the wheel for our cloud-based product or vice versa is really essential for us. And having a partner like Mapbox that has that flexibility is key so that we don't have to worry about all these other components. So thank you very much for Mapbox having me. I'm gonna be here for the next couple hours, and if you have any questions, we'd love to meet you guys. Thank you so much.